Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to 32 Manias of Mike. Wait, 32? Guys, we're one away from being done. We're WrestleMania 31! Oh my god! 2015! This ain't far away. This was back when the world was, was bright and shiny. And so was this WrestleMania, because it was held outdoors on the West Coast. There was a lot of sun. And, oh boy, did they have to kill a lot of time to try and make Undertaker's entrance as dark as possible. Uh, <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, this, this WrestleMania, I, I, I gotta be honest, it's not the best. It's not the best. It opens well, and it closes well. Both of those are extremely well done. In the middle, it's a lot of things that remind you of Raw, which not necessarily the best thing in the world but um we will begin as i always like to do with the pre-show pre-show matches we got two of them this time guys two pre-show matches first we have a fatal four-way for a wwe tag team championship as wrestlemanias are want to do um yeah the champions tyson kidd and cesaro oh i miss tyson kidd love you love, love you tyson love you tyson um they defeated the New Day, Los Matadores, and the Usos. Um, I remember this being a really, really fun match. I remember really wishing this was on the card, like the main card, because I remember being a hell of a lot of fun. They only showed a few highlights on the main show, but actually both these pre-show matches were really good from what I recall. So honestly, I'd watch the pre-show I'd watch the first match, and I'd watch the last match of this pay-per-view. The rest of the stuff in between, you guys make your own judgment. But, um, yeah, so the second match, of course, even though it's unfortunately on the pre-show, we have the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. And, as I do, I'm going to run down every single entrant for you, which is kind of funny, because a lot of these people were pulling double duty. Like, Legitimately, one match after the other. I know there, because it's the WWE Network, it's a longer pre-show. So, certain guys got time to rest and everything. But here's everyone that was in the match. Curtis Axel, Adam Rose, Fon, Dong, Go, Alex Riley, Zack Ryder, Bo Dallas, Hideo Itami, the first ever NXT entrant into a Andre Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Itami won a... um. A tournament that was held WrestleMania weekend. So really cool to see Atami get a, a spotlight in this match. Uh, they had Diego, Fernando, Sin Cara, Tyson Kidd, Mark Henry, Connor, Victor, the Ascension have already have already been moved up and they're already on the pre-show. Sorry, Ascension. Uh, Darren Young, Heath Slayer, Titus O'Neil, boy that read like a lot of Nexus. Jack Swagger, Biggie, Kofi, Xavier, Eric Rowan, Goldust, Kane, Jimmy Uso, Cesaro, Ryback. Miz and Damian Mizdow. Also, uh, Jey Uso, I believe, got injured in the opening match. That's why he was replaced by someone. Probably, I'll guess Alex Riley. I'll guess him. Uh, but this also had the fallout between the Miz and Damian Mizdow, which was really good. That was we all expected, kind of Damian Mizdow to maybe win this by last eliminating the Miz, but. No, because there's one guy I haven't mentioned yet, and it's the person who won this match, and if you know your wrestling history, you know, well, it's a big show! Yeah, big show won uh, the Andre Giant Memorial Battle Royal, which, you know, I guess he should have at some point before he retired. I just kind of wish it wasn't this one. Who knows? I mean, you know, it's big show. I, I hope he doesn't win this year. That would be really disappointing. Because there's going to be a lot of people in that battle royal. Uh, it's going to be weird. All right. Uh, so let's get to the show of shows. WrestleMania. All right. We start off hot, you guys. Ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. You got your bad news, Barrett. Dolph Ziggler, Stardust, Luke Harper, Archer, Dean Ambrose, and Daniel Bryan. This may sound like a clusterfuck on paper, but hot damn was it amazing to watch. 
all of these guys kicked ass so much so like oh th this is just a really good ladder match to watch a lot of cool things stardust pulls out his own bedazzled ladder which is fantastic and i forget is it i believe it's bad news bear it actually breaks off one of the rungs of stardust bedazzled ladder and just starts beating people with it it's such a cool spot yeah it, it, it's fantastic you have to see this spot you have to watch this whole match this match was amazing it's also unfortunately daniel bryan's last wrestlemania match uh but he does win he does get the win uh he he and dolph exchange headbutts at the top of a ladder probably not the best thing for him in the long run but he does win the intercontinental championship and unfortunately i think daniel bryan had to retire like a few weeks after this but um good good send off for him you know uh kind of like edge similarly unfortunately but yeah a uh, really really good match highly recommend watching it the next match we have is randy orton going up against the architect seth rollins with jj security uh now this match pretty standard it's fine it's not horrible it's not the best it's most remembered for the ending, which if you know Seth Rollins and you know Randy Orton, you know what this ending is. Because this was back when Seth Rollins was still allowed to use the curb stomp. So, Randy Orton is wont to hit RKO's out of nowhere, or a very telegraph somewhere. This was one of those out of nowhere ones, where uh, Seth was going for a curb stomp, he jumped really high in the air, and Orton caught him with an RKO. Really cool finish. Um, if you want to watch the finish again, I highly recommend it. The match is fun. You know, it's it's not going to set the world on fire. But it's a good cool down from the uh, barn burner that was the ladder match. All right, so moving on. Uh, guys, this is... All right, th this is... This should have been good. I'm going to start off by saying this should have been good. Uh, if you look at the WrestleMania stage, you'll notice something very distinctly different about how the word WrestleMania is written because it's not your typical WWE font. It's the font of the movie The Terminator. That's because this movie is sponsored by Terminator Genesis. That's also because Arnold Schwarzenegger was inducted into the Hall of Fame, which we'll get to. But um, this, this match is Triple H versus Sting. Okay? Uh, Triple H versus Sting. Sting his first and only WrestleMania match. So, um, WWE never really understood what to do with Sting. And it's very unfortunate. Sting, his entrance, he comes out to these bongo beat drummers. It's very weird. It doesn't match Sting at all. If anything, he should have come out with something similar to what The Undertaker did at WrestleMania 9, if you can remember all the way that far back. But yeah, Sting comes out, uh, then Triple H comes out in an entire Terminator-themed entrance, complete with Terminator props, which, I'm sorry, Kenny Omega did this way better without any help from Arnold Schwarzenegger himself. Uh, so if you want to see a Terminator entrance, find Kenny Omega's Terminator entrance at Wrestle Kingdom 11, I believe. Wrestle, Wrestle Kingdom 10, Wrestle Kingdom 11, whichever one it is. It's Kenny Omega in the main event. It's the six-star match. Just look all that up. You'll be able to find it. And that's a much better Terminator entrance. Triple H was okay. It was fine. Uh, the match, it's a no-DQ match because, of course, it's a no-DQ match because, oh, boy, are there shenanigans all over the place. Honestly, the best part of this match, now, you got, you got sledgehammers, you got bats, you have... The DX running in, you have the NWO running in. Yes, the NWO is saving Sting, which doesn't make any sense because they spent most of their time fighting Sting. Now, if people from the Wolfpack came out, that would have made sense, but no one wants to see Conan at WrestleMania. Um, yeah, uh, and, but the coolest thing I will say is when Sting locks Triple H in the Scorpion Deathlock, as soon as he turns around, Shawn Michaels super kicks Sting in the face. That's the closest we'll ever get to Shawn Michaels versus Sting, you guys. Because that would have been a really good match, I think. 
this one was just kind of a punch punch. It's a punch punch. That's it. And uh, of course, WCW can't get a win. So uh, Sting loses to Triple H. And then they all hug and shake hands, and it's all weird. Yeah. All right. You know what? Let's let's take a five. Let's talk about the Hall of Fame after this because I believe that's where it came in the uh, in the course of. Oh no! I'm sorry. Right after this, we were treated, treated to a concert by Kid Ink. Th- this this should serve as a warning. If there is a musical performance at a WrestleMania that does not directly correlate to a wrestler's theme song. That WrestleMania is not going to be as well received because A, the concerts are taking time from matches that could be on the show. Two, it means you don't have enough confidence in giving more time to the matches that you do put on the show. And six, most likely people don't want to see the concert anyway. I mean, when I was at 29, I, I, I got Diddy. Which was great because I I actually I, I enjoyed Diddy, but and, and his was relatively short compared to the rest of them. But uh, don't do concerts at WrestleMania. Don't just just don't do it. Just don't do it. Don't ever do it. Like if someone's performing a song, fine. I fully support that. In fact, I forgot to mention it. Bray Wyatt had his entrance theme performed live in WrestleMania 30, and it was actually pretty awesome. Uh, Randy Orton had his perform, maybe it was 32, I forget. One of those, but it was actually really good too. Stick to that. Let's stick to that, guys. But um, So let's talk about the Hall of Fame. This year, uh, we had, I'm going to get the sad one out of the way first. The first ever Warrior Award went to Connor the Crusher. Uh, whew, if you guys haven't seen the, the Hall of Fame for this year, the speech that, that Daniel Bryan gives about Connor will make you cry. The speech that Dana Warrior gives about the Warrior Award will make you cry. And the speech that Connor's dad gives will make you cry. So, if you want a good cry, if you need a good cry, I highly recommend turning on the 2015 Hall of Fame ceremony. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, really, it's really cool to see it, though. I know that wasn't really what the Warrior Award what what the warrior wanted it to be intended for, but you know it is what it is. Uh, also, we had, as I mentioned before, Arnold Schwarzenegger inducted into the Hall of Fame, inducted by Triple H. Naturally, uh, we also had the Bushwhackers, Luke and Butch, inducted into the Hall of Fame by Mr. John Laurinaitis. Which uh, who doesn't love the Bushwhackers? And I know people are probably gonna say, "Oh, the Bushwhackers—they're the—they're the Coco Beware of the tag teams in the Hall of Fame." I'm like, so what? The Bushwhackers are awesome. Come on. They're great. All right. As far as the rest of the, um, the inductees go, Kevin Ash, Big Sexy, um, had a great speech. Had a really, really fun speech. Talked a lot about the business, a lot about his time in WCW. Was inducted by Shawn Michaels, and there was a whole click thing at the end, obviously, as they do. Um, also, Tatsumi Fujinami was um, inducted this year by Ric Flair. Uh, NWA champion. He was actually a WWF Intercontinental International Tag Team Champion, which I didn't know existed. But yeah, um, don't really know too much about him. I, ironically, I haven't seen that much stuff on him on the network. I'm sure it's there. I just haven't really seen it. But uh, we also had Larry Zabisco inducted this year, which uh, Larry Zabisco, if you ever try and spell his last name, don't. It sucks. Uh, speaking from someone who had to log a lot of old WCW footage and had to write out Larry Zabisco's name a lot of times. We also had Alundra Blaze inducted by... Oh, by the way, uh, Larry Zabisco was inducted by Bruno San Martino. So it's cool to see Bruno back in the Hall of Fame. Uh, we had Alundra Blaze inducted by Natty uh, at the Hall of Fame. Alundra Blaze's speech was awesome. She pulled out a trash can. She brought the women's belt back. It was really good. Kind of wish they had done the women's sale... Then, but we get a cool moment, uh, WrestleMania 32. So, you know, it is what it is, but it would have been cooler if they did it with a Lundra Blaze. Uh, we also have Rikishi being inducted into the Hall of Fame by by uh, Jimmy and Jey Uso. Rikishi, great, great speech. You know, he's kind of like one of those 
middle of the road kind of guys that you're not sure if he should get in. But if you think about it, Rikishi had a really long career in WWE. He wrestled at WrestleMania 9, you guys. WrestleMania 9 is a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, WrestleMania 9 in, in Las Vegas is part of the Head Shrinkers. So uh, good for Rikishi. I always like Rikishi. And he did it for The Rock. He did it for the people. And, of course, the headliner, my man. Ooh, yeah, Macho Man Randy Savage. Yeah, finally going into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, inducted by Hulk Hogan. Not my first choice. Yeah. But uh, Lanny Poffo represented me, yeah, and he uh, he gave a good speech and he gave a good poem, yeah. Macho Man, come on. It's about fucking time. But yeah, Macho Man was inducted this year, and that's always a good thing. All right, so back to the card at hand. We have a Divas tag team match. This is the last time I will say Divas match at WrestleMania, you guys, because after the after this WrestleMania 32, they're called women's wrestlers. Isn't that a novel concept? But this is the last Divas match, and it's a tag team match. It is the team of affectionately known as Paige, Paige and AJ Lee, against the Bella Twins, Nikki and Bree. Uh it's 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 a fine match. It's mostly AJ getting knocked off the ring apron. Uh, I remember me and my buddies were wondering what was going on with AJ because Paige was wrestling most of the match. But um, I believe this is also when AJ was kind of on her way out too. So uh, unfortunately, it's the last WrestleMania match for AJ. But um, AJ, AJ and Paige beat the Bellas. So that's good, right? With the uh, with the Widow's Peak. Yeah. I mean, it was a fun match. It was, it was short. Probably could have been a little longer. Would have liked it to be a little bit longer. But uh, yeah, it was it was, it was all right. It, it was okay. I feel like the women's match at WrestleMania 30 was better, and the women's match at WrestleMania 32 is clearly a lot better. Um, but now we move to the U.S. title match with uh, John Cena going in, going up against the champion. Holy shit! He came in on a tank, Rusev. <laughs> yeah, Rusev's entrance. You know, I have. WWE hasn't had a lot of elaborate entrances in a while at WrestleMania. Like, the early 20s, there were a lot of John Cena entrances that are elaborate. Triple H always has an elaborate entrance, but it's always some form of him wearing a skull exoskeleton. So they get less and less fancy. But this one, Rusev came in on a fucking tank. And it was awesome. Rusev... If it wasn't for Shawn Michaels zip lining to the ring from the top of a stadium, Rusev might have the best WrestleMania entrance of all time. I'm being dead serious about that. I honestly can't think of one that I would put between zip line and tank. I can't think of one that goes between there. If you guys can, or if you guys have an opinion on which on what would go between those two, or hell, even above zip line. You know, I, I'm, I'm not made of stone. If you guys think there's one above the zip line, that's fine. I can accept that. But uh, let me know. Uh, hit me up at Mad Mike 483 Hit me up in the comments here. Please just let me know. I But I think Rusev may have had the, the second greatest WrestleMania entrance of all time. Second greatest. I'm good. I'm going to go that far. It's a shame the match is kind of what it is because it's... Brapadu. It's it's John Cena beating Rusev, as you as you kind of knew was gonna happen. And it's very unfortunate because Rusev had a lot of momentum. He was still undefeated at this point. And um, yeah, so Cena beat Rusev, and you know, Cena wins the US title, goes on to have some of the best matches of his career. So from this we get Sami Zayn, we get Kevin Owens, you know. It's the circle of life. It it's it, things happen for a reason. It sucks for Rusev, but this eventually helps a lot of people in the long run. So you can't really be too, too disappointed about it. Now, moving on, uh, we have The Undertaker back from his first loss at WrestleMania going up again. Oh, actually, excuse me. Before we get to The Undertaker, we have a time-killing segment. Da -da 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 -da. Not on the show. At WrestleMania. Yeah, because uh, the geniuses of WWE... Decided to do an outdoor WrestleMania on the West Coast. And they did this 
knowing that they wanted the Undertaker and Bray Wyatt, for that matter, to have darker entrances because Bray Wyatt relies on the, the fireflies and the crowd. And Undertaker just relies on things genuinely being dark. So the authority comes out and they just vamp for about five, ten minutes about the crowd and how many people there are there. And it brings out the rock. And the rock and the authority vamp. And vamp and talk and talk and talk. Until finally uh, Stephanie threatens the rock and says, What are you gonna do? Hit a woman? Of course the rock's not gonna hit a woman because oh the co-star of his movie is in the front row. Hi, Ronda Rousey. Nice Vegeta shirt. Rock brings Ronda Rousey into the ring. This segment goes on a really long time. Uh, and it actually didn't even set up anything. Because Ronda Rousey decided to get back into UFC and, and lose a lot. So yeah, I don't know if it'll ever lead to anything. This might have just been a huge waste of time. And guess what? It still didn't get as dark as they wanted it to for The Undertaker. But The Undertaker and Bray Wyatt, they have a perfectly fine match. Um, it's nowhere near the Taker-Brock Lesnar match or even the Bray Wyatt-John Cena match. The storytelling it just wasn't there because there wasn't as deep of a story. It's a shame, but, you know, Taker gets his win, so he's back on the winning ways. And Bray Wyatt, he got to work with The Undertaker at WrestleMania. The, the one cool moment was when Bray's doing the spider walk and Taker sits up. Very cool spot, you know. That's the spot people remember from this from this match. But yeah, uh, so we're at the main event, guys. And boy, this main event, Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE title. Brock Lesnar's the champion, and boy, does the crowd not like Roman Reigns. This will be a trend. Uh yeah, and Brock, as soon as the bell rings, just beats the shit out of Roman. Like, within 30 seconds, there's an F5. Within about five minutes, there's a second F5. There's a third F5. Roman Reigns is kicking out of everything. Brock Lesnar throws over 10 suplexes, even coins the phrase, Suplex City, bitch. And, uh, yeah. But um, it gets to a point where Roman is able to fight back a little bit. He knocks Brock against the ring post, busts him open. That's that's really the impetus for the rest of the match. That's that's when the the, the rest of the match kind of takes place. And both guys are out at one point after Roman hits a spear, I believe. And then, wait, doth my ears deceive me? We hear the music of one Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins is Mr. Money in the Bank. Oh, my God, he's running down. Seth Rollins cashes in. Turns the match into a triple threat match. Ro uh, Brock Le Roman Reigns spears Brock Lesnar as Brock's about to F5 Seth. Seth hops off, curves stomp on Roman Reigns, and your new champion is the architect Seth Rollins. Coolest mania moment. Really, really, really good. Um, Probably the first good first title win we've had in a long time at Mania. At least longer than I can remember. Like, uh, probably... Rey Mysterio's was a good one, where he won the title for the first time. That was back at WrestleMania 22? Apart from that, I think everyone else who's won the belt afterwards had... had or, oh, no. Daniel Bryan, obviously. Excuse me. But, but, yeah. Besides Daniel Bryan, that's a really good title win. That's a really good first title. Because Daniel Bryan had already been a world champion. He had already been a world champion. He had already been WWE champion, even though that was taken away from him right after, thanks to Money in the Bank, Alberto Real. You remember all that shit. Uh, but this was the first first title win in a long time for WrestleMania, and it's a really good one. Uh, Seth Rollins turned the entire crowd. like uh, Because when Roman started getting offense, the crowd was not happy about it. The crowd started turning on this match when Roman kicked out of the third F5 because as we all know, three F5s was what it took to beat The Undertaker and Brock put way worse of a beating on Roman than he did on The Undertaker. I will say that. But uh, yeah, so Seth Rollins leaves the WWE Champion and um, if you want more details about that, check out the WWE Comics. 
it's all documented right in here. I'm not even joking. Like these two, fir these first two comics are all about Seth cashing in. They're really cool. I'm not. I'm not lying. I, I'm not. I don't work for WWE anymore. I, I, it, they're just fun to read. But yeah, so uh, that's it for WrestleMania 31, guys. The, the next time I do this, it'll be the last time. WrestleMania 32, last year from the Big D, Dallas. Dallas, Texas. Everything's bigger in Texas. Is WrestleMania bigger? We'll find out because I honestly don't remember a lot of the matches from last year. I remember a few. I don't remember all, but we'll see. So um, if you want to get in touch with me, if, you, if you're liking what I'm doing here, if you're getting excited for WrestleMania by these videos, hit me up at MadMike4883 on the Twitter machine. Hit, hit me up on the Wrestling Man Show Facebook group. Leave some comments in the YouTubes. Let me know what you think of this stuff. If you can think of a better entrance than uh, Rusev or Shawn Michaels, let me know, please. Uh, also, on, on the Mayhem Show Twitter, at Mayhem Show, have the hashtag MM if you got any uh, queries for me about that. But, um, yeah, so, for Mad Mike, I'm Mad Mike, and we'll see you at WrestleMania 32 on 32 Manias with Mike.